Diddle and um, British Strongman Podcast. So today I want to talk about the Fit Expo, Shane. So tell me about England's strongest man. Like you've got a lot of guys that I'm following who are really interested in seeing them compete. I think a lot of them are doing like a big show for the first time, like first big comp. In, like, yes. Basically been building freaks <laughs> during lockdown. So uh Tell us about that and what you're doing. And yeah, so FitX, we've got 11 MSC guys competing, which is pretty cool. They're the English Rummers man. Um, yeah, it's a couple of people's first comp because it's just, I think it's just the way it's felt with COVID and stuff because there's not been that many competitions on. And um, obviously, the online qualifier was an opportunity for guys that, you know, have been itching to compete for a while. But comps keep getting cancelled and moved and all this. It's frustrating. So they've all done the online qualifier. Uh, a lot of them have qualified and it's the first comp. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a big one to 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 jump into the deep end. But I think it's pretty cool that people have that mindset because like we've talked about on the podcast before, sometimes people are too nervy to jump in at the first comp and just kind of see what happens. So proud of all the lads that are jumping in for the first time. There's probably about four or five lads that are doing... Well, there's actually a couple what they've done is since they've qualified, they've actually gone and done the odd uh, novice comp, actually, and intermediates, uh, just because they wanted to... They got a bit of shit for it, actually, Josh, because they uh, qualified to England on the online qualifier, but they hadn't done a comp before. So I said, jump in on this inter's comp and fucking get a bit of experience. And then obviously they're getting shit because they're qualified to England and doing this comp. And I'm like, no, they, they are inters. It's just that they happen to qualify for England's online. And in my opinion, you can't really say that you're getting experience from an online comp. You know what I mean? It, it's different. They need, they need. Right. Well, well de def definitely not. Like they, they've never been like fucking refereed with down commands. They've never had yeah, to exactly, like, yeah. never, never had to like jump in straight at a fucking max effort yoke or whatever. Like, yeah, because there was I got a few messages saying, Why are your Inters lads doing this Inters comp? And I was like, Well, they're just Inters. <laughs> they just are. So yeah, but all, all the lads are uh, going in for it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great day. Um I'm also there at the FedEx on the Conti Sports stand on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so I'll be there all weekend. It's right next to the strongman, so I'll be nipping over to the strongman, the strong woman as well, and the and the log and deadlift I assume is uh, Probably similar location, so I've been looking around all day, and um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to watching the strongman to be honest, and having a good day. Are you going to be at the FedEx, Josh, or not? Yeah, well, I'm going to go. I'm d definitely going to go on Saturday because I've got the England strongest woman. Because I'm going to go with uh, Molly and be a little bag bitch and all that. Um, yeah, we've got uh, we've got Jenna in as well. Uh, you know, Jack's missing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Jenna's yeah. Going to be in there as well. So um, so that, that'll be good. Really looking forward to that. And then I, I entered the log and deadlift like ages ago before it had been, um, before New England's strongest one was on the same, at the same time. So I'm going to take my kit and um, see if I can sne sneak off in between. <laughs> see, if I can, see if I can nip over and get, get a log in and a deadlift and stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, but like it'll be priority to watch to watch the women's, but um, would be good to. I've got I've just got this thing in my head, right? I get I get like random thoughts in my head, like intuition, and like ninety percent of the time I'm right when it comes to like my own lifts. You do you know what I mean? Like you don't. You yeah. Don't, you just just something comes into your head and you're like, "Fuck me, where does that come from?" And like I've got I've got this thing where like. Want to pull 300 on Saturday, and I haven't been anywhere near it for months because I've like been in my ass has been hurting when I've been deadlifting and stuff. But like, uh, put basically, I pull, put, pulled a max effort raw deadlift on Saturday, snapped myself, and then my back was a bit sore for about 12 hours. And then I've just like regenerated, like, a, I just feel like I feel like I needed to like push myself to instead of just being a pussy. So then I put the suit on yesterday and it just felt fucking 
good, really good. Pulled 280 decent yesterday. Um, so I just, just feel like if I could pull like, still not feeling confident with my deadlift, but I'm feeling like I could pull like 300 at like high 80s, 87-ish or something. It's, it'll be like, that'll be a decent thing to tick off in my head. And I'm strong. Are you dieting? Because I've fucking, I've forgotten what you said. Are you dieting? Are you underrated diet? Are you, me and Flash are talking about this. Are you dieting 280 as in you're going to want to walk around at 80-ish? Mm. Or are you planning to yeah. cut from over six? Uh, well, original plan was 84. Like get to 84 and then walk, and then like water cut for... Whereas the, th the thing on the thing that I tried when I competed on Saturday was weighed in at 86 on the day. 85.9 I was on my scales when I left, before I left. Uh, is that with a bit of water cut or is that just waking up? Yeah, that's that's with a, I, I did a, I did a water cut. So I wanted to see how I felt completely depleted. And yeah, it, yeah, yeah. In, it was, it was weird because like I was, Go, going up to squat, it didn't feel heavy, but I was like cramping up, like my, my calves and my quads and that were cramping up after three reps, but I could just kind of ignore it and grind through and like performed like as well as I could do, if you will. So, um, but yeah, that, that was the experiment. I felt like if I could comp like when I was compete, like I get, I got home and I was like 87 or something like that. Like I just competed up like at that 86, 87 range. So I feel like with a 24 hour weigh in, I'll maybe get back up to 83, 84. I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's what I want to do. The static monsters one in October is my first under 80 comp um, where I'll be happy to, to just, to just fucking absolutely kill myself to make weight and see how I feel with a 24 hour weigh in. If I feel a bit rough, I'm not really asked and then kind of decide from there, if you will. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Cause, Cause obviously we've seen people be successful both ways. Obviously like there's, yeah. there's uh, like flash and uh, Dean who do it, do it really well, don't they? But then well, the twi twins have dieted to like 79, 80. And then yeah, the twins, twins look the twins like I feel like the twins look a bit like you do. What now the skinny cunt. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like your what I mean is they're 79 and ripped, yeah. And you're 86 and probably like similar body comp. Right. So I think for you to do what the twins do, it's gonna be hard. Um, you know, to actually walk around uh, 80. Yeah. So I think, I don't think you should cut from 86 because from my experience, it's a nasty cut. Yeah, well, that's I what... Think 84 is a middle ground. I think that's the, a good show. Yeah, well, I started last week at like, what was it, like 88.5 or something like that. And like, I, my, my, I still ate the day before. I, I water loaded. Um, I didn't do any like like hot baths or sweating protocol or anything like that. Um, I just had a bit of a water cut, like an easy 2.5 kilos. Yeah. A um, so, bit of a salt load, um, uh, carb depletion and stuff, but... I still ate carbs up till Thursday, about 400 grams of carbs until Thursday. And then just dropped them on Friday to about a hundred. Um, so basically like I could go a lot, I can go a lot more extreme. In fact, if I needed to make 85 the other day, I, I, like I could have done, I just wouldn't have felt quite as good if you will. So to be honest, I think I'll go somewhere in between, like somewhere between what like Fl Flash would do and what the twins will do. At world somewhere in between probably. Yeah, the thing you got to remember at Worlds is you've only got two events on day one, haven't you? Yeah. So even if you even if you're a little bit fucked that day, yeah, as long as you can get through two events. Because uh, I picked up on the water cut things on the same day, 
is yeah. when you've got five events in a row, come like event three or four, like you say, yeah. you sometimes get a bit crampy. Whereas at Worlds, you do your two, and then it's like, right, I can I can start to refuel yeah. again. By the next day, you're not even going to know that you did the cut. You know what I mean? Yeah. The only thing I'm concerned about is log being on day one, which log was historically when I cut from like 116 to 90, like the thing that plummeted. But with this uh, kind of taking it more gradual this time, I was actually prepared to be the mentally prepared to be the weight that I am now and be dealing with like significant strength loss on my deadlift and my overhead. I didn't think my moving events and loading would be, uh, I thought they'd be okay. Whereas actually I'm, I've got a bit of form back with my deadlift and I'm not in pain and my log, what did I do last two, like two weeks ago? I did, you did 127 for eight singles. Didn't you? Yeah, I did that last week. The week before I did 20 sets of one at 120. Um, last week I did the 127 for eight sets of one at like 88 kilos or something. So uh, today, today, today after this, I'm going to go and log and see if I can hit a few singles at 130. And then if I can, I'll probably do the log and deadlift on Saturday and see if I can hit 130 in the comp. That'd be good. We got oh, we got uh, Lucia's doing logging. Uh, well, not the log, but she's doing the dead as well. So Lucia's doing yeah. the record dead. I've got that. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's class. Is she doing that at England or the uh, or the log and deadlift comp? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know. I just know it's at the fix. I assume that it's at the log and deadlift, but it might be at England. I don't know. I'll have to ask her, but I can't remember. Because she was supposed to do it at England, but then she's hurt a knee. Um, so we kind of pushed that back uh, to do UKs instead. Um but thought we'd take the deadlift at FX, so I'm not sure what she's thought of your Brown, to be honest. And what's the goal with that, or are you, we're just going to see on the day? 310? 310's the goal, yeah. Um, she pulled 305. She pulled, pulled two weeks triple, didn't she, the other day? Yeah, about three weeks ago, she pulled a 280 or 285, maybe triple, and then she's pulled 305 about 12 days ago that was the last heavy pull about we Lucy Lucy's good about 10 days out usually for, for a heavy pull and then we do a speed pull five days out that's kind of like the thing we've worked that works for because she's she's good pulling high frequencies so we deadlift every five days um but one's heavy one speed basically so a speed deadlift was on Monday and or is it Monday today what day is it? Oh, it's Tuesday today isn't it because <laughs> I've been ill I've lost all track of days <laughs> but yeah yesterday was the last speed day which is five days out I think so she had 200 for three by three which isn't that speedy is it really but um, we've kind of been ramping her speed pulls up slowly as well so that they get a bit heavier and then she ended up bent over rowing it as well which oh yeah I saw that actually it put me yeah it's fucking getting oh it's just getting silly strong it's weird because working so much on other events as well and a press and uh, as, as priority this phase and then she hurt me so uh, we had to be like all oh, right we'll just start deadlifting again, again then. so yeah just constantly on a deadlift fucking block at the moment and what's uh, the uh, what, what's the crap with the UK is how's she feeling about the events of UK is it she excited about that yeah it's just one of them they've got it's good. It's good events for her if she had a if she hadn't tweaked the knee because there are a couple of events that are like a bit. Let's just say you know what I do. I'm going to do a dodgy knee, like the pole push, for example. Um, have you ever done a pole push, Josh? Or have you yeah. done, done a tug of war on you? Well, a pole push is very similar to a tug of war. Well, apart from the, you're, yeah, you're quite lateral with your stance. Yeah, and I think it's her ACL that she pulled, so it's not the. It's not the greatest position for it to be in, so we're a little worried about that. But historically, things like that are a good event for her, so as long as she's confident with the knee and it holds up, I think she'll do really well. And they've got some cool events there, you know, like this big barrel loading thing and uh, that they call the Super Dre Woman. I don't know why yeah. it's called. 
Are you gonna Are you gonna go down and watch? I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get down. It's just a bit of a trek, but should I'm, I'm hoping to. I wanted to go as soon as I found out about because what was the last when, when, when did she pull through? Was that a, I can't remember the comment. Was it Brits? The UK strongest man, wasn't it? I think. Oh, it was the UK strongest man, wasn't it? No, well, yeah. Well, but when she was describing to me UK strongest man and the deadlift, we thought it was a smaller like we just thought it was like a small little arena and she was gonna go and pull uh, three hundred and we were kind of like I was discussing the drive and everything and we're like it's not gonna be that big a moment, I don't think. I'll come for the next big one. And then she texted me like Shane, I was a bit wrong with the fucking arena. It's like a lot bigger than what I thought. And then when I seen the video and everything, I was like, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, it's ma- ma- magic that one in, honestly. Yeah. Fucking magic, magic. Honestly, she only got the invite five days before. So it was like, not, we just thought it was like another cop. She didn't know much about it. And the and, in yeah. it, like the, the video with it being like Elico whites and that as well. It just looks sexy, didn't it? Yeah, it was fucking proper class right. moment. Like as if I didn't fucking go, I couldn't believe it. But... Yeah. So I won't miss the next one, but I think the next big one that she'll do is uh, seven hundred pounds or three twenty, whatever. Because this this three tens a bit of a bit of a pit stop, I call it. Like between yeah. between three hundred and three twenty, that's what she's got her eye on three twenty because that Becca Swanson has apparently pulled three fifty. Um, although there's zero evidence of it ever happening, um, people are saying that. So she really wants. To beat that, so that it's kind of like three seventeen and a half, seven hundred pound. Yeah, if she does that, that'll be no one can say anything because even the one that you know, not that the thing is, I don't, I don't disbelieve that Becca Swanson pulled that because she is an animal. Yeah, but there's just no evidence of it, so I'm like, yeah, but but Sh- Shane, honestly, mate, it's one of those things now. Like, it's not even worth this conversation because, like, just watching Lucy lift and like. The sca- there's fucking you, you can't, there's no as long as she you can keep her interested and in lifting like there's she's not it's not like she's near a fucking limit is it? Oh no, it's you know what I mean. Like in fact, if anything, like the last whatever however long you've been coaching it, like the rate of progression's in, increased, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I don't know, don't know what it is, but you know when some you, you'll have noticed this because. Obviously, your coaching style is really unique, and you'll get what I, as so is mine, I suppose. But I say that you get kind of like hyper responders to training structures and training styles. You get kind of like yeah. you get the odd non responder, you get the average responder, and then you get a hyper responder. And yeah. Lucy is definitely like a hyper responder to uh, the way I program the deadlift. Um, yeah. Which is, which is good because she's already a good deadlifter and got the genetics for it so it's pretty crazy really yeah. um so yeah it's kind of been been a mad one yeah that's uh quite quite, quite interesting that isn't it like because um well it's a discussion for another episode but that that's what i noticed with like say the way that i program deadlift like <laughs> get at least like a massive phase of it might even could even be a year 18 months six months or whatever where most people really respond. So I think looking looking back to like the, the conversation with, I think it was Max, wasn't it? Max McCall, where we were talking about different methods and which one's the best. Whereas personally, I think if you like the, the best way will be doing doing phases. Do you know what I mean? Like you, like you, me using elements of way of like how you program for people, like, you using elements of what I use, then us using elements of what he he uses before like anybody gets like to that point where they're stale. Yeah, a good question I was not a question I got asked was about I've talked about phases and stuff once on Instagram. Someone said to me, How long should a phase be? Like what's your how long do you do this phase for? How long do that for? And I always thought like well, I don't know because it could be a like, week. Someone, it could be three weeks. It could be eighteen months, couldn't it? Like, why? Yeah, if someone, if someone, if someone's working, yeah. Yeah, if, someone's uh, work, if it's working, we'll just yeah. keep going. And if it keeps working, I'm just going to keep going. You know what I mean? That, that's it. That that's what that's why. Look, like some people ask me, like, oh well, uh, how long are the blocks that you uh, write for 
whatever. And I was like, fuck me, it could be, it could be three weeks. It could be, it could be a year. Like if you're, if we're, if we're milking some progression, why would we change it up? The only, the only way you'd, like I'm talking like general off season here or when you're not competing or just generally getting stronger. Like, um, and equally as well, like if you're starting a, starting a new block and it might, you might think in theory, it's the best thing ever. You're really excited, but someone's two or three weeks into it and they're, they're lifting like shit. They're feeling like shit. Like, why would you stick with it? Like, um, yeah, exactly. Because you can, you can notice when something's working and not working. And you don't want to be like, oh, well, I said it was six weeks, so you're only on the second week. I know it's going shit, but we've got four more weeks of it. It's like, well, what's the point? Like, they're just, they're just going to be even shitter if it's, if it's just not gelling with them. If, if the knees are hurting or whatever it is, you know, the movement patterns aren't correct, then just change it. And then, you know, dock it up as a bit of info for the database. Don't give this guy this again. It's so good. So um, just to wrap up this episode, so what are you doing at what are you doing at Fit Expo then? What what are you doing? You're at, at the Conte Sports Stand. Yeah, I'm just at the Conte Sports Stand. I have no idea what I'm doing. If I'm being perfectly honest, I guess people come over and ask me about supplements, and I chat bollocks about subs. So maybe you just want to chat with me about strongman, or ask me anything. Come over, say hello. I'll also be mingling around the strongman. Um, and strong woman and deadlifting. Um, we're pretty close to it. Like we're literally right next to it, I think, uh, from the kind of diagram anyway. So hopefully it's easy oh. enough to snip over. So do, do you know where the, where the, do you know where the strong woman arena is compared to the, where the log and deadlift will be? How far is it roughly? Any idea? Uh, I don't know about that because I think they moved the log and deadlift. Uh, to a different room. I think it's in like some kind of conference room, I got told. I don't know for certain, that's just literally what I got told uh, by someone who's doing it. So I don't know. Yeah. All right, mate. But the, the, the main the main strongman arena is uh, kind of proper obvious to, it's in the main bit right in the corner. So it's pissed to find. But the log and dead, I've never even been to the that arena before. So, I can't even tell you what it's what it'd be like. At Body Power, though, the conference rooms are all around different areas, aren't they? Um, yeah. To the main room. So I'm kind of picturing it like that, but I don't know. Awesome. Right. Oh, yeah. To, to wrap up, I've got um, approximately, I think, 28 throwing bags left. If uh, if anybody's interested in buying them on, so go to my Instagram. Um, Lean Body Strength Club or Josh Lancaster, and go on the li- go on my link tree, and you can uh, you can buy it buy them direct off there. Them link trees and aren't they? Yeah, very good, mate. So I'm going to be uh, testing out some uh, uh, tacky and salts and stuff at the minute. Oh, you got some salts in you as well, there. Yeah, the, the t- t- tacky is fucking absolutely brilliant. Um, but I'm just going to test it a few different temperatures before I start get getting it out to people. But I'll. Uh, I'll get you some, mate, anyway. Right, I'll speak to you soon. Oh, yeah, and I've got you... I've got... what One of the sandbags is for you, actually, Shane, isn't it? Because you sorted me out with the thing. Oh, throwing bag? Yeah. Yeah, I need a throwing bag. Yeah, well, I've got one. one um, so if, you, if you're passing my gym at all, just pop in and get one, mate. Yeah, we will do. Cheers, Josh. All right, pal, see ya. Right. See you, mate. Bye.